Here I am in August 2023. I was about 60 kilos and pretty lean. I felt in the best shape of my life. Over the past eight months, I've gotten a lot fatter. It's time to get lean. I'm currently eight months into my lean bulk, which was intentional. I did start this journey wanting to gain weight and I'm up about, I wanna say 11 pounds. I started at about 61 kilos and I'm now up at over 66. Like in the morning, it's about 66 kilos. I intentionally went on this to try and build some significant muscle and I knew I'd gain fat in the process but I feel like kind of like Edna Mould talking to Bob Carr in The Incredibles. Oh my God, you've gotten fat. My pants are tight and my clothes are not fitting. I have not been this heavy in at least three years and I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for this to be over. This is kind of like my current physique and my current stats. I'm up about five kgs or 11 pounds since I started this eight months ago. I wish I took better progress pictures and did a body fat scan at the beginning of the bulk. I didn't do that, but I did one about four months ago and I have gained since then 1.3 kilos of muscle and about a kilo of fat. So if I put that combined with the last few months before that, then I'm going to guess that I've gained about like two and a half pounds, I mean kilos of muscle and about a kilo and a half, like probably like two kilos of fat, if that math is mathing. I'm going to like casually show off my new tattoos here. The thing is, I still think I look pretty good. I'm by no means unhappy with my body, but I started this because my goals have significantly changed and I went from wanting to be skinny my entire life to hitting that goal, maintaining it for three years and then going, you know, I, I want to be, I want to be a beast. I want to be a muscle mummy. And like this girl here is hashtag goals for me now. So that's why I embarked on this journey and I did a full recap of what the bulk looked like, which you can look at that video right here. It's been a long time since I've been really lean and I want to give myself a new challenge. I want to look like a fitness influencer or at least someone who takes care of their body again. And so I'm entering a fat loss phase for the first time in quite a long time. And I want to take you on that journey so that you can see exactly what I'm doing what I'm changing versus the first time when I lost the 40 pounds and how I'm going to be really assured that this result does happen and I get to about a 14 to 15 percent body fat over the next three to four months. So if you want to follow along for that then pop your girl a subscribe but also let me know in the comments what you really want to see from this fat loss phase. I'm also going to be making sure that I have at least 50% vegetables or non-starchy vegetables on my plate for all of my main meals. That doesn't include breakfast for me because I am slightly repulsed by the idea of eating veggies in the morning. No hate to you if you do it. A lot of our clients do and it's amazing but any meal that I'm making is going to have a ton of veggies. So that's another big thing that you can do. You right there, you right now listening can do for your journey as well. My plan is to get to this 14-15% body fat and then have that as a bit of a baseline where I either stay at maintenance for a while and build some more muscle or I go on another bulk. I'm not sure yet, but I'm really, really excited to get there because I've worked so flipping hard for this muscle. And it's pretty exciting to me entering another fat loss phase, just knowing that I can do it and I have all the tools in my little tool belt to get into a calorie deficit and lose weight. So there's six main things that I'm going to be focusing on to do this and guarantee that I see results month in, month out over the next couple of months. Most importantly, I'm going to be getting into a calorie deficit. A calorie deficit is really how all weight loss works. It's how keto works, low carb, high fat, I mean, I said all the same things in three different ways, but like any diet, intermittent fasting, it, it all works by a calorie deficit. You're just reducing the amount of calories that you eat to less than what your body burns. And so your body is like forced to dip into these stored fat cells and deplete them. So everything that I'm going to be doing is going to be helping me to do that. I'm not going to go into exactly how a calorie deficit works because I have a video here that you need to go and check out. Next, I spent so much time on this video, by the way. It's one of my best and hardly any people will watch it. Go check it out. But number one is I'm going to intentionally lower the calories in my day-to-day -day foods. This is kind of like my meals that I eat every single day, my oats, my lunch, my dinner, and then my dessert because I have dessert every single night. And the first way I'm going to do that is by eating a lot more vegetables. I intentionally didn't eat so many during my bulking phase, but I'm going to be upping that to at least one to two pounds of non-starchy veggies every single day so that I can eat a lot of bulk and a lot of volume in my food to feel full, but the calories are going to be much lower. 
I'm also going to be eating more salads because then I can fit my non-starchy veggies into those salads, eating a lot of raw foods so that I am just lowering the calories again more and have a salad rather than leftovers as my default for my lunches. I'm also going to be eating a lot of pumpkins because pumpkins or squashes are really low in calories but they're also quite filling. They're kind of between a broccoli and a potato when it comes to calories per pound and I ate a lot of them during my weight loss phase where I was trying to lose the last 10 pounds last time and it's coming into winter so it's like perfect season where I'll be steaming these up, adding them to my salads, making soups and really taking advantage of something that's super delicious but really really low in calories and filling it at the same time which not a lot of things are. As much as possible I will avoid snacking and I try and design bigger meals to accommodate that but if I am going to snack it'll be fruit or vegetables rather than the bliss balls and <laughs> croissants I have been having occasionally recently. I'm also going to be eating a ton of potatoes because potatoes are so filling and the other day I made a really low calorie high protein meal and and I was hungry afterwards. So rather than trying to ride that out, I just cooked myself a microwave potato because I know that that is going to help me to feel really satiated. And it's only adding like 100 or maybe 150 calories, which is a tiny amount when you think about a binge being like 1,000 or 2,000 or possibly even more, which I avoid it by having that. So potatoes and microwave potatoes for the win. I'm also going to be cutting out and avoiding some of the high calorie foods that I've been in the habit of eating recently. Things like the occasional mayonnaise, I will be swapping that out for a low calorie oil free dressing. Um, hummus, I'll be going a whole lot easier on. Coconut yogurt, I'll just be skipping it entirely. I won't be eating breads unless it's really, really a special occasion. I'll be opting for less rice and more vegetables. Basically anything that is above the 700 calories per pound mark in terms of calories density I'm going to be either avoiding those things or massively reducing them in my day-to-day -day meals. The second piece of this is I'm going to be very consistent with my diet and consistency is where those sneaky calories come in and that's where you can feel like you're dieting so hard during the week and you have a bit of a slurp, splurge on the weekend and you don't see results and you're like why poor me like why is it so hard and it's because inconsistency just bumps up our calories really really quick. So what does that look like for me is I won't be eating out. I'll be bringing food with me when I go to events. I had a baby shower combined with the 30th birthday this weekend and I was so flipping prepared. I had my air fried tofu, I had sweet potatoes, I had my overnight oats ready to go. Everyone was sitting at the table eating bagels and here I am munching on my overnight oats and I feel great. I had an amazing time but I'm so committed to getting to this goal that those things are going to have to change and they have already. I'm going to mostly cut out treats and high calorie elements just because these do add up so quick. I got into a habit of when I would go to Auckland which is a big city two hours from my town I'd go and get croissants or I'd eat the desserts if they were going with my family and I'm just going to stop doing that because it truly does not help me and I'm going to find different alternatives. I don't want to hate my life and feel like I want to give up on my diet and then have that end in a binge. So if I'm really craving something like dessert, which I have tried so many times to cut out, but it is not happening. So I'm dessert. Dessert is just here to stay for me. If you're a dessert girly, I want to hear in the comments, like let's band together. Let's do this. And so I would have something like a rice cracker with some low calorie vegan ice cream, which probably sounds boring to most of the population. But if you're in a fat loss dieting phase, it is like heaven on earth. So don't knock it till you've been there. And side note, this is a really big difference between me now versus old me when it came to dieting. I had to be perfect. So if I had one bite of ice cream or if I had like one bite of sweet potato when I was doing a fully raw diet, that would send me into a week-long binge. Whereas now I'm like, I don't have to be perfect to see results. I just have to be overall in a calorie deficit, overall have my habits mostly good and then adjust if I need to. So I'm cool with having a few higher calorie elements if that helps me to stay more consistent with my diet. Not this all or nothing black and white thinking anymore. Number three is that I'm going to be working very hard to preserve some of this muscle that I've worked so flipping hard to build. I've been going to the gym consistently four to five times a week and that is going to continue. Um, it's awesome because now 2 p.m. runs rolls around and Nick and I have this amazing routine where we just drop what we're doing and we go and we gym together and it's been so good for our relationship and 
so good to just create that routine so that's definitely going to continue i am going to be also eating a higher protein diet and i've never advocated for this and i still stand by the fact that i don't think you need a high protein diet in order to be losing weight in saying that the things that have changed for me are that i do want to be a muscle mummy i do want to have significant muscle and your body is fighting against maintaining that constantly so i'm going to be having more protein to maintain that because my baseline is just simply higher than most people's i mean i still look in the mirror and think like I'm a fraud and I have no muscle part like that. Like, it is what it is. It means that I'm eating more things like tofu, quinoa, chickpea pasta, legumes in general. And then I am eating a protein powder as well. And I really like the Macromike protein powder. It is the best that I've found. And I'm pretty sure it's really only available in Australia, maybe in New, in New Zealand. But that's just what I'm using. I'm not affiliated or anything like that. Number four, and this might come across as kind of controversial, is I will most likely be loosely counting macros. And there's a couple of reasons for that. The first one is that I do, like I say, want to keep this muscle. So knowing that I'm hitting a higher protein target, like upwards of 80, 90 grams of protein a day, probably even like upwards of 100, is really, really important for me because I do not want to lose the muscle that I have I've just flipping busted my ass for. I also want to be a bit more aggressive in my approach and I feel like I'm at a stage where I can do that because I know how to structure my environment to be successful. Uh, I can be pretty disciplined with the foods that I'm eating. I know how to create systems where I stay consistent and I'm, I'm very much a veteran when it comes to losing weight and being in this world. Whereas someone who's at the beginning of their weight loss journey, they've not lost a ton of weight before, they haven't worked on maintenance, I don't think that this is necessarily the right approach for them. In saying that, I want to be someone who's open-minded and I know that there are a lot of people who see a ton of success counting macros and from what I've learned over the past couple of years, I do think I can do this in a much easier way than I ever have. The last time that I tried to do it, it was like the first time that I had like any semblance of freedom or what I called freedom with my food. So I'd be eating things like vegan trumpets and magnums and like super high calorie like cakes and things like that. And then trying to squish the rest of my macros into that which means I would have to eat way less at my other meals and I'm not going to do that anymore because it's just simply not worth it for me. The other benefit for me for counting macros is that when it comes to creating content it's really nice to be able to actually say hey this is a low calorie meal and I know that for a fact because I have tracked it or to know where I need to make adjustments and so from a purely transparency standpoint I think that this is going to be helpful for me to document this journey. The other part about counting macros is I do believe if you're going to go down that route it is extremely valuable for you to have some coaching or have some guidance or any kind of weight loss in general so that you know that you're doing it in a sustainable way and that's the fifth thing that is going to be big around this fat loss journey for me is that I have invested in having some coaching and I do this every single time that I want to get proficient at something and really guarantee that I hit a goal I have a YouTube coach I have a business coach I had someone teach me how to learn how to learn how to drop in I've had Instagram coaching I've had mentors like you name it this is a huge thing that's changed for me over the past three or four years is that I see the value in coaching so much right now and in case you didn't know I myself have a coaching program and we help vegan women lose weight and keep that off in a sustainable way through behavioral change and through getting out of all or nothing black or white thinking and just having someone in their corner who knows how to guarantee that they get consistent results week in week out so if that's something that you're interested in then you can check out my bio and see a bit more info about that these are the main things I'm going to be focusing on over the next couple of months. And I want to take you along, like I said, with me. So let me know what kind of things you want to see. Do you want to see my weights or my stories? Do you want to follow along on Instagram? Should I do what I eat in a day reels? I do actually have a sample kind of meal plan of what my day is going to look like. And that's coming up next. So if you want to see what all of this looks like put into actual food, then definitely subscribe. But let me know. What do you want to see? And let's do this together. Let's make this happen. Putting it out there into the ether. This is the commitment device that I need to actually do this. So, like, I'm excited. I'm, I'm flipping excited. Am I excited or do I just want my pants to fit again? Hmm, we'll see. By the way, did anyone spot my little mushroom maker in the background? I'm so excited to grow some oyster mushrooms. So, thank you, Allie, for that birthday present. That's it for me, but follow along if you want to see what kind of foods I'm going to be eating and get those weekly updates of how I'm going on this fat loss phase. And let me know as well in the comments, are you on a fat loss phase? Are you on a fitness phase? What are you doing with your life? And let's do this together. All right.
Bye. See you next week.